The JG Aurora A5 is a 3D printer. You can tell it says right on it, 3D printer, right there. No question. So the next printer that we are going to review in March Madness is the JG Aurora A5. JG Aurora is a 3D printer manufacturer who's been trying to get a 3D printer into my hands for quite some time now. And it's just not happened for one reason or another. But then they contacted me and they said, you know what, we're going to do it. We're going to send you a 3D printer. Just tell us which one you want. So I looked at their options and the A5 blew me away. On paper, the specs for this machine was going to dethrone the CR10 as the king of cheap Chinese 3D printers because it was as big as the CR10, but it had a fancy touchscreen interface instead of a Marlin interface. It had uh, filament out detection. It had power out continuing print recovery. It had Wi-Fi on it. It didn't have Wi-Fi on it, turns out. Uh, they, they just couldn't make that feature work before they shipped it out. And a lot of people are harshing on the A5 for saying that they were going to have Wi-Fi, but then not having Wi-Fi. But to me, that's a little bit unfair because spec for spec, this is a superior machine to the CR10 that we already have and love. So why should we be harshing on it for not delivering on one of its promises when it really does deliver on a lot of other ones? So I got the A5. It arrived. I unboxed it with great excitement. I recorded the unboxing of it and I had a little bit of trouble uh, figuring out how to get the, the Z-axis to screw in to this really very slick and, and quite possibly one of the most cool and futuristic looking uh, cases that I've ever seen in a 3D printer, but uh, yeah, it, was, it was difficult. I, I eventually figured out that if I tipped it on its side, balanced it precariously, got everything slotted in there that I could put those bolts in and it made it work. Then I, I started playing with it immediately. I was impressed that everything goes onto a USB stick and not an SD card. There's no SD reader on this one, which isn't bad. It's just different than normal, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I haven't used a lot of 3D printers that use USB sticks, and I kind of like that. My one complaint about it is that the USB stick that they send kind of sticks out a little bit far, and I feel like something's going to break it off. And maybe if this machine uh, uh, keeps going for me. I might switch that out for a lower profile USB stick, but otherwise it's fine. The touchscreen interface works great. The auto bed leveling is auto bed assisted leveling, which means that the screen pops up a little menu and you can tell it where on the bed to go and it will automatically move to the corner so that you can adjust the, the level. And it does so in such a way that you can still get at the screws. It's okay. I don't want to complain about it because, like I say, it's better than what we have unless you've got an Ultimaker. The Ultimaker does a very good job of walking you through step by step the process and saying, I'm going to move it here, now you do this. I'm going to move it here, now you do this. Whereas this one, you still have to know how to level a bed and then you can use it to level a bed which is odd. It's not bad, but it's definitely one aspect of this machine that could be slightly improved. Uh, still, overall, I'm not complaining. It's got this fancy build surface on it that uh, they call black diamond or something like that. It's basically perforated build tack on glass. I'm not really sure what it is, but it does its job. It sticks to the prints when it's warm and it lets go when it's cold. So I, I ran a couple of test prints. Then I tried a couple of prints in ASA just to see how it handled high temp filaments. And those didn't stick to this fancy build plate as well. So I went back to PLA and I started printing the Pi Tower, the Tower of Pi by Roman Heglin from Swi uh, Switzerland. And this is the shorter one with the filled in back that has a better chance of printing well. And what happened to this one? You can tell it's not finished. It's supposed to be about twice this tall. What happened to this one was I decided that now was the time to test the uh, power out print recovery. So as it was printing, I pulled the plug. And then I thought, I'm going to give this one the test, the master test. And I walked away for a little while. And then I forgot to come back. And then I came back. 
And in that time, the print bed had completely cooled. So when I plugged it back in, sure, it popped up the little menu up front and said, hey, should I continue this print? It, it's got a weird uh, message when it does that. But yeah, you tell it, yes, continue the print. And uh, unfortunately, it had completely detached from the bed. And so when it heated up, it didn't grip it again. It doesn't go out of its way to pull it back in. And so the print just started pulling it off. And so failure. Well, okay, that was partially my mistake. It can recover from a small power failure, but not necessarily a big one. So no problem. Start it again. Try it again. I got this far, and I'm not sure what happened. All of a sudden, the Z-axis start stopped working. This actually just stopped mid-print with the nozzle hanging over it and just heated one spot. And so I turned it off and turned it back on again and tried to print it, and it wouldn't go down to the build plate. And so I turned it on and tried re-leveling the build plate, thinking maybe that was the problem, and the Z-home was going up instead of down. Now, there is, to my eye, no Z-axis limit switch on the top. It's on the bottom. So it going up was a big problem. So I tried the jog controls. Why seems to work just, no, why doesn't, oh, there we go. So Y is working just fine. Let's move it 10 millimeters. X is moving just fine. Z, go up. It goes down and it totally just crushed the, uh, the build plate here. And if I press down, it'll still well, it won't go down because it's hitting the limit switch. Go up. Okay, this time it went up. This time it went down. This time it went up. It makes no sense. And if I hit home and tell it to home, X homes, Y homes, and Z just freaks out. What? What is suddenly wrong with this machine? Now, at this point with any other machine, I would tear it apart and try to fix it. And indeed, I will do that with this machine, but you might notice that this, this fancy enclosure is not exactly inviting to the idea of cracking it open and trying to fix it. This enclosure says, you're not supposed to fix this machine. We're gonna make it hard for you to get in there. And in fact, they do. There are a lot of screws and I'm not sure which ones to take apart to, to get at it. It's, it's complicated. Now, I told JG Aurora about this. I said, your machine's acting really weird, and uh, do you want me to send it back to you? Do you want to fix it? And they said, no, it's all right. We'll send you another one. Uh, they, they, they deliberated on that one. They weren't sure that they wanted to, but they said, you know, we want you to be able to get a good review for it. And I said, well, okay, I'll wait for your other one. And I didn't crack it open, and I just left it out here in the shed. When I pulled this machine down to review it today, I discovered that while I've been waiting for that other printer to come, and it's been months, they sent it to the wrong person, they aren't going to, it's just, it was a, I don't know what's going on, but I don't have its replacement. And when I pulled it down here, spring started, mice have infested my shed, and one of them found this case to be a lovely place to call home. It's gross inside there now. I still want to open it up, vacuum it out, and uh, see what, if anything, can be done with it. But I certainly hope there's not any damage to the wires, though I fear the worst. Now, overall, I want to like this printer a lot. I really wish that I could give this a positive review and recommend it to people because, like I say, on, print, on paper, it takes the machine that we already have and love, puts it in a slick space age enclosure that makes it look and feel like it should run without you having to touch it, like an appliance should. I've never seen a 3D printer that actually takes the electronics box and makes it take up the entire space that the Y axis is going to move. I would have thought it would be better to build a Core XY system and have a full enclosure, but this is what they did and it's, it's, it's beautiful. This honestly looks like something out of Star Trek. But I feel like my first question when I got this was how in the world can they possibly make something this slick and this beautiful and have it be approximately the same price as the CR-10? And it seems like the answer is they used beautiful on the outside and crap components on the inside. 
And that means that if you get this machine, there's a chance that you'll have my experience, that it won't work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, it's not easy to tear apart and get at and fix. You are more or less left at the mercy of the manufacturer, and the manufacturer is not going to pay international shipping so you can send this back to them. Which means one of two things need to happen to this machine before I can recommend it. Either one, they need to broaden their, their reach and they need to have more local options for shipping in a lot of places. In other words, they need an office in America, they need an office in Europe, they need an office where you can ship it to without paying for international shipping. And people there who are skilled and talented at taking these apart and repairing them and sending them back to you. Or they need to stop using crap components on the inside of them and make them good. Now, my opinion of this machine might change. Once I finally, I'm probably gonna take this to the makerspace, tear it apart or let somebody else tear it apart and see if we can fix it. And if we can get it fixed and if it can be back to working, and I can say, all right, if you get a bad unit, you can fix it yourself. Then my opinion of this machine will change. But right now, the way that they're marketing this, the way that they're doing this, I can't recommend this printer because you, you can't send this back if it comes to you faulty and mine came faulty. And if the new one that they ship comes and it's great and it works fine, then by my math, you're still at 50-50 that you're going to get crap. Now, if I can fix this and get it up and running, then all right, fine, we can fix it. And just keep in mind that if you get that bad 50-50, that you can fix it yourself. But at this point, that's my verdict. I can't, I, it, and it kills me. It's a beautiful printer and I wish I could recommend it, but I can't, I cannot recommend this printer right now. So there we are, the JG Aurora A5. JG Aurora, I wanna thank you guys for sending this to me. I just, I wish I had had a better experience with it so that I could recommend it to people. But this is where I am right now. And keep in mind that now that we're in the middle of March Madness, I'm not waiting for that positive experience. I'm not waiting for this to come together in a way that I can recommend it to you. I am just putting these out. This is my experience right now. And right now my answer is no, but that might change in the future. So stay tuned for later reviews on this printer but there you go i want to thank you very much for watching i want to thank my patreon supporters you guys give me the parts and stuff that i need to make this keep going and it, if this gets working it will be because of you so thank you very much but thank you for your view i want to remind you safety first and i will see you next time do you want to know more about 3d printing but don't know where to start or did you buy a 3d printer but you need some help getting it going don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.